Good morning. I'm Pastor Brian here at Richfield Lutheran Church in South Minneapolis. With me today are Paul on the organ and Mary as our vocalist. This is the divine service for May 9th, the sixth to Sunday of Easter. Our gospel is John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. This Sunday's image of the life the risen Christ shares with us is the image of friendship. We are called to serve others as Jesus came to serve. But for John's gospel, the image of servanthood is too hierarchical, too distant to capture the essence of life with Christ. Friendship captures the love, the joy, the deep mutuality of the relationship into which Christ invites us. The Greeks believed that true friends are willing to die for each other. This is the mutual love of Christian community commanded by Christ and enabled by the Spirit. Our prelude is Aria and F major by Handel. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our gathering song is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
changed from glory to glory till in heaven we take our place till we cast our crowns before the lost in wonder love and praise The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. O, o God, God, you have prepared for those who love you joys, joys beyond understanding. understanding. Pour, Pour into our hearts such love for you that, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through, through Jesus Christ, Christ, your Son, our, our Lord. Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Gospel is John, the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 17. On the night of his arrest, Jesus delivers a final testimony to his disciples to help them in the days ahead. Here he repeats the most important of all his commands, that they love one another. This is the Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No greater love, no one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I am a soldier in God's army. <laughs> So goes some old-time Bible camp song. I am a soldier in the army of my God. The Lord Jesus Christ is my commanding officer. Later on, this, the hymn concludes, Even death cannot destroy me, for when my commander calls me from this battlefield, he will promote me to captain and then allow me to rule with him. A private in God's army. Is that what you are? There are many ways of describing who or what we are to God. Slave, servant, disciple, steward, children, brothers and sisters, friend, follower, and so forth. Which are you? In this old time song, we enlist as privates. And when we die, we receive field promotions to captain. Now, I don't know what your experience was in the military, if you were, but when I was in the Air Force, I spent some time as a captain down in the Pentagon. One day, I was part of a team giving this highly classified briefing in a secure room behind vault doors to the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force. Suddenly, there was this emergency. Huh. Some three-star general needed a stapler. So all the one-star generals and all the colonels and all the lieutenant colonels and all the majors, they look around the room, and lo, there I was, a lowly captain. So I was the one sent out through those vault doors to go find a stapler. Getting out of that secure room is like that old TV show, Get Smart, you know, where, where Maxwell Smart goes down this long hallway with all these security doors closing one after another behind him. All that for a stapler. So I'm not too sure that that promotion to captain upon death in the song is not good a deal. 
Well, here the disciples are. It's getting near the end of what we know as Monday Thursday, the night of the Last Supper. Jesus last night before being crucified. Jesus is about to wrap up his farewell address to his troops. They've been with him for three years now. They've been through a lot. And they're starting to figure out that something big is going down. They're not sure exactly how it's going to play out, let alone what it means. Now, Jesus seems confident, but they do not. I mean, what is going to happen to their beloved rabbi, Jesus? And what does it mean for them as his followers? I mean, what exactly is their relationship to Jesus? That's going to be critical in how the authorities deal with them. If the authorities are going to crucify Rabbi Jesus, well, certainly they're going to be going after his disciples too. To be a disciple means to be an apprentice to a master. As anyone in the trades can tell you, there's this very strict hierarchy among masters and journeymen and apprentices. The journeyman can be trusted for much of the work, but still needs the master to sign off on their work and for help with the really complicated work. But the apprentices, well, they need regular supervision and guidance and direction. So, yeah, maybe the disciples are Jesus' followers, soldiers in Jesus' army, as the song puts it. They are most certainly not sergeants or lieutenants, let alone captains. As disciples... The relationship is one way. Jesus is the master, and they are his apprentices. Here and elsewhere in the New Testament, followers of Jesus are called his servants. Now, we're a little uncomfortable with this language because, well, servants are what the really rich and powerful have. And servants are, well, subservient. Are we Jesus' servants then? I mean, that is the language we hear here. But wait, there's even more. The word the Bible translates here as servant is literally slave in the original Greek. And slave is really harsh language. No one wants to be someone's slave, maybe not even Jesus. But that's the language used. I mean, slaves have only one option, obedience, and blind obedience at that. It's like the poet Tennyson describes a soldier's fate. Ours is not to reason why, ours is but to do and die. It's no better for slaves. They don't know why they're told to do what they do. They have no choice in the matter. Now, even as a captain, there's little choice in the matter. Life as a slave or life in the military is pretty simple. The only acceptable solution is to salute smartly and say, yes, sir, The powers that be are not interested in our advice about what to do, let alone our opinion. In fact, we used to have a saying in the Air Force that I am paid handsomely not to have an opinion. Hmm. Is that the way it is with God, that we're just his slaves, at best his servants, if that's any better? I mean, do we have any say in the matter? Or is it just a matter of blind obedience, that we really don't know the reason why, nor dare we ask or question it? Is this how you think about your relationship with God, that God is the ultimate master, and our relationship with God is one of master and slave, maybe servant? Is God like some unpredictable boss or parent, uh, someone with a lot of power, someone you're afraid to be honest and open with, someone who's always critical, always judging, for whom your best is never good enough? I suspect for a lot of folks that is how they see God. Perhaps Jesus reads his disciples' minds, because in our gospel for today, he speaks to these very matters. Jesus says, I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy, and your joy wholly mature. I am no longer calling you servants, because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I've called you friends, because I've let you in on everything I've heard from the Father. With Jesus, there are no secrets. He tells us everything God the Father tells him. Everything. Nothing is held back. There are no insider secrets to be revealed only to the select initiates. Jesus is clear here. That's not how he works. There are no secrets. There is no hierarchy of power and privilege for those who know more. And that is why Jesus says he no longer calls the disciples servants, because they are his 
friends. And so they are in on everything. He tells them the reason behind his crucifixion, and he tells them again and again. It may be hard to understand, hard to get, but he's telling them as best as, as he can. Yeah, the disciples and all Jesus' followers are his friends. The relationship is two-way. Whereas with a master and slave, the relationship is certainly one-way, relationship of blind obedience. Now, we are partners. Even though we're still humans, creatures created by the creator God, we are now partners, like a full business partner. We are now, we are now stewards entrusted with the day-to-day operation of the family business. This relationship between Jesus and his followers is that. It is a relationship, a relationship of love. Just as God the Father loves Jesus, so Jesus loves us, his followers. This is Jesus' joy and our complete joy. This joy then is, well, like the great crooner Nat King Cole put it, the greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. Yeah, that's it. Because of Jesus' limitless, unconditional love, because he keeps nothing from you, you are Jesus' friend. You are a friend of Jesus. Those in Alcoholics Anonymous sometimes identify themselves as F-O-B, or friend of Bill, Bill being one of the co-founders of AA. So now your identity is now friend of Jesus, or I suppose you could say F-O-J. Isn't that good news? I mean, especially when, when polls tell us, tell us that 60% of men over the age of 30 could not identify a single person they could call a close friend. And of the other 40% who, who listed friends, well, most of them were made during childhood or during their school years. Friendship is not easy to develop. Jesus is your friend, your intimate friend. It's a reciprocal relationship. Jesus is your friend, and you are Jesus' friend. Jesus chose you to be his friend. And what a great deal this is. For now, not only are you Jesus' friend, you are also a friend of the big guy upstairs. Because any friend of Jesus is a friend of God the Father. It's like the Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Romans. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? Who then will dare to tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would even dare to point a finger? I am convinced that that nothing, absolutely nothing, can get between us and God's love because of the way Jesus has embraced us. So not only are you an FOJ, a friend of Jesus, now you are also BFF. Best friends forever. There's one more title in today's gospel reading for you. In addition to FOJ and BFF, you can rightly say this about yourself. I am the one Jesus loves. Maybe it sounds a little arrogant, but you are quoting scripture here. Jesus' closest friend on earth, the disciple we know as St. John, is identified in the gospels as the one Jesus loved. Now, if St. John were asked, what's your primary identity in life? He would not say, I'm a disciple, I'm an apostle, I'm an evangelist, the author of the fourth gospel. No, he would say, I am the one Jesus loves. What would it mean if we too came to the place where we saw our primary identity in life as the one Jesus loves? How differently would we view ourselves at the end of the day? Psychologists say that you become what the most important person in your life thinks you are. How would your life change if we truly believed the gospel's astounding words about God's love for you? If you looked in the mirror and saw what God sees. There's a story of the pastor in the old country who, while out walking, sees Oli kneeling on the side of the road praying. Impressed, the pastor says to Oli, you must be very close to God. Oli looks up from his prayers and thinks for a moment and smiles and says, Yeah, he's very fond of me. You are someone Jesus loves. You are an FOJ. You are his BFF. You are a friend of Jesus. You and Jesus are best friends forever. 
You are someone Jesus loves. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Our hymn of the day is, My Song is Love Unknown. risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, the earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love, so that by their song, all creatures of land and sea and sky, burrowing and soaring, may call us to join with them in praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons, but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit, so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering, especially the family and friends of Russ Carlson, Tim Hutner, the family and friends of Andy Sherry, and those who we now name in our hearts. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point us toward life-changing responses to those in need in our communities. Be with the dying. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. We remember with thanksgiving those who have shared your love throughout their lives. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. amen. Remember that you can support this and other of God's ministries through Richfield Lutheran Church today through our website richfield-lutheran.org. Thank you for your generosity. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Join us here again next Sunday when our gospel reading is John chapter 17, verses 6 through 19. In this reading, the church hears Jesus' words on the night before his death, his prayer for his disciples, and for all who would believe in him through their words. Remember on next Sunday, um, on Sunday, May the 16th, that in addition to this pre-recorded service, you can join us in person here in the sanctuary. Remember that's May 16th at 9.15 in the morning. Until then, go forth with God's blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is What Wondrous Love Is This? Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Our postlude is postlude in G major by Handel. Thank you. 